In any city, small business is at the heart and soul of the local economy. Of almost all businesses we're talking about today, small businesses may have faced the hardest of times in the last few years with the pandemic and now with inflation and wage increases. Our next guest covers small business on a regular basis as editor-in-chief of the San Antonio Business Journal, Ed Arnold. Welcome to the show. First of all, congratulations on the role Thank that you. the Business Journal plays in our community. Absolutely. I remember when it was basically just a recorder <laughs> of courthouse information, mm -hmm. and it's grown into a very serious business journal. We're and, very proud of and it. And you're part of a network of business journals across the country. Absolutely. Uh, I uh, find it must-reading. Thank you so um, much. Tell, tell me about your personal kind of experience and sense mm -hmm. of small business and its role in a local economy. Well, let me start by saying that before I was a journalist, I owned a small business. So for 10 years before I was a journalist, I managed payrolls. I had a small retail outlet, five employees. I really do know what that struggle is like. Um, for me, it is truly the heartbeat of any economy, regardless of the size, small towns, big cities. The small business community really drives the economy. The success of the small business community really does define whether a city is doing well or not. Some cities may have large corporate presences, but without the backbone of small businesses to support it, that economy is going to founder. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, I always thought, it, thought of it as sort of a foundation I'm under the economy. That. And you may have good luck or bad luck with respect to large businesses. They come to town, some of them leave, they lay off massive numbers of people or something. But the, but the small business economy keeps the jobs uh, going. And we make a big thing about a company coming to town and bringing 500 jobs. But we can probably create 500 jobs in small business on a, almost a monthly basis. I, absolutely. I also I think about it sort of as uh, candy versus eating your vegetables, right? Like <laughs> these big corporations coming in, who wouldn't want those jobs? I mean, you know, TJ Maxx opened a huge distribution facility down the south side. They gave a lot of life to a part of town that needed more development, and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's a, a candy injection. That's a sugar high. What you really want is your vegetables every day, which is what small businesses are to a local economy. So how do you think we're doing as a city in supporting small businesses? I find there are very few cities in the country that can actually say we have a functioning small business strategy. And part of that is because there's so many. How do you devise services for such a broad base? And also, they're so different. Exactly. So tell me about how you think San Antonio is doing. I would say that there are several really wonderful success stories that I'd like to point to. So Sage, for example, uh, Robert Liddell has a program called Back Office over at Sage, uh, San Antonio Growth on the East Side, yes. where essentially he mentors businesses. Small business comes to him and says, I'd, I'd like to expand, but I don't really know where to go for capital. I'm having right. a hard time with my accounting on the back office. He reaches in, helps him, and sort of mentors these small businesses. Those are the kind of programs that are personal, that are connective, that are one-to-one, -one, that the city needs to figure out ways to scale. Southside First, for example, another wonderful economic development organization right. here in town, they have a wonderful series of workshops for small businesses about helping them get access to SBA loans, about access to you know, how to do their own social media marketing. Really strong workshops that small businesses need to have. How do we figure out how to scale those beyond these smaller shops and smaller organizations and make it a cohesive group. Yep. That's what's missing to me. In a city like San Antonio with its particular demographics, large minority population of Latinos and African Americans, how do you think we're doing with respect to punching up mm -hmm. the capacity of, of minority-owned small businesses? The statistics show a pretty good gap. Yes. And not only in numbers, but in size. Uh, many, many high percentage of the minority businesses are single person That's right. That's entities. Right. That's right. Um, what strikes you as the arena for action? I think that one of the most important things is a lesson that I learned in the wake of the pandemic or in the early days of the pandemic with the PPP program, right. right? which was a lifeblood saving tons and tons of businesses and very important. But what we found in the aftermath was the people that found themselves out, the small businesses that found themselves on the outside looking in were the ones that didn't have the connection with a local banker. They didn't have those interconnections. And those were more often minority women-owned businesses that didn't have that inside connection. Mm -hmm. That's what's lacking. 
it's not just that the city does a pretty good job of encouraging minority business doing its uh, its due diligence when it comes to its contracting and those. It does an excellent job with that. But what we don't have is an opportunity for many of these minority owned businesses to connect with the broader economic framework where they can get resources that's deprived of. And what about procurement? Mm. on the part of our larger mm. enterprises, sometimes public. I think mm. we have something like 14 um, major public organizations like the power company, CPS, yes. Water Systems, SAWS, Port San Antonio, UTSA, yes. uh, the Community College, the San Antonio River Authority, the Health Science Center, et cetera. There's about Absolutely. 14 of them. Absolutely. Are, are they, is it important that they engage with small business and particularly minority businesses. Absolutely. Is that a viable and important strategy? It's an incredibly important strategy. Public money being uh, properly guided in the allocation and procurement phases, it can give a whole range of services and expansion to those small businesses they never saw before. Yeah. And thereby strengthen the, the base, the foundation Without a doubt. of the local economy. Without a doubt. So, uh, how does the Business Journal cover small business? Sure, in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, we have awards programs that honor small businesses, but also one of the things we want to do in the new year, in fact, is encourage uh, more connections between small businesses and those resources that we talked about. Give more attention to that Southside First Workshop program, more attention to the West Side uh, Economic Development Council and what right. they're doing, and try to create a more um, cohesive view so that a small business owner can pick up our paper and find resources. That's what I think. Well, we're I think to focus the on. Uh, Business Journal in that respect could become a major asset I hope so. uh, to small business and thereby to our larger economic uh, future. That's Thank you very role. much for identifying that role. Not at all. And good luck carrying it out. Thank you very much. Honored <laughs> to be with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Supported by Texas Mutual Insurance Company.